room in the right room? Is this the kindergartner's room? Wow, thank you kindergartners for letting me come into your room here. Wow, you got the cool rug. This is like one of the, one of the cool rugs we have in, in the different rooms here. Wow, it's been a while since I've been in this room. We got some people on the board here, this is nice. Oh, and if I get hungry, it looks like uh, I have a snack on the board. I, I've got a nice macaroni uh, King Solomon Temple here. So if I get hungry, I guess I can have some pasta. Wow, lots of other stuff going on here. Man, it's so good to have everybody. And uh, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, happy, uh, happy uh, special day today. Today's, uh, I think, Valentine's Day, the day that we're releasing this video. So happy Valentine's Day, everybody. And uh, I've got my Bible here. I've got my book here. And uh, we got a lot of good stuff to do. Lots of cool things in this room. In fact, um, I'm looking in front of me here. If I reach down, I can get... Oh, oh goodness, I've made a mess already. It's like I've stumbled into the uh, musical section. So you guys have some cool uh, musical stuff in here. Wow, I got some... Oh, okay, wow, I got some all kinds of... I better put those out of the way before I make a mess here. We've got all kinds of other stuff. There's just all kinds of things going on in this room here. I tell you what, you never know what you're going to see. Wow, this is uh, pretty crazy. I don't know where that came from. And, uh, well, i got lots of other things. Wow. Again, happy Valentine's Day. Um, glad you're here. Uh, glad you're here joining me. And uh, I hope you have your, your Bibles with you as well because we're going to be uh, picking up um, in the very next chapter from last week. Last week, as you know, we talked about Philip and the Ethiopian and how Philip was a disciple and how he was going out and spreading the word and telling everybody about Jesus. And Philip had a great ministry and he met this uh, guy from the Ethiopian area and this guy went back and probably told everybody that he knew. Uh, so that was just great how God's word is spreading. Now here's the thing about our story so far. We've been talking about how the early church is uh, forming and how they're going out and telling people about Jesus. And you might remember from a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I don't know if I mentioned it last week, but in chapter 8, we see the, the finishing of chapter 7. If you remember about two weeks ago, we talked about a, another disciple named Stephen and how he was such a great uh, believer in God and he was so passionate about telling people about Jesus. And in fact, he trusted God so much that he trusted God all the way to the end. He preached so boldly that, that the Jewish leaders, remember they arrested Stephen and they killed him. They stoned him to death. And you might remember that I said that there was one particular Jewish leader at that time who, who was watching what was going on. And that was a guy named Saul. Now he was a very smart, very learned, he was very well educated, a Jewish leader. And Saul was there at the stoning of Stephen, and it said that he was there, and some of the people, they, they took off their coats, or their robes, and they gave it to Saul to hold while they were picking up stones and throwing at Stephen. And he approved of what was happening. So we see at the very, very beginning of chapter 8, in Acts chapter 8, the very first verse is really kind of finishing up chapter 7, and it says... Saul was one of the witnesses, and he agreed completely with the killing of Stephen. Wow. And then remember in chapter 8, we talked all about Philip, and we talked about how he went, and uh, we didn't read the part about him with this evil magician, but uh, you can read that on your own. But then the second part of chapter 8 is what we covered last week, where he met the Ethiopian on the road, and then the Holy Spirit took Philip away to go minister somewhere else. Well, we return, and we're going to look at really at Acts chapter 9 today. So, if you don't have your Bibles with you, go ahead and get it and uh, turn to Acts chapter 9. And I'm just going to pause the video right now and I'll just wait for you to go um, get, your, uh, get your Bibles here. So, let me just pause the video. Okay, we're back from that. I hope you had time to, to, to get your, your, your Bibles. Again, looking at chapter 9. So, let's get into this. So, it starts out talking about the end of Philip, and it says, Meanwhile, Saul was saying threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So this guy, Saul, he is really against all the Christians. 
It's his job, he thinks, to go round up these people that are distorting the traditional Jewish belief in what God's word says. So Saul is so convinced that what he's learned about God is right, that he's threatened by all these other believers, by all these Christians. He thinks that they're like a cult, or he thinks that they're spreading lies. He thinks that what they're saying about this man named Jesus is not true. So Saul has a mission, and he goes to the high priest, and he's gonna ask the high priest for permission to go out to another city and to go arrest a lot of Christians and bring them back so he can put them in jail and maybe even have them killed too. So he went to the high priest and he said, you know, let me go out in Damascus and I want to cooperate with them to arrest the followers of Jesus. And I'm gonna bring them back, men, women, whoever, and Saul wants to bring them back so that they can be uh, put in jail in Jerusalem. Now things get very interesting. So again, we have somebody traveling on a road, kind of like we had last week with someone traveling on a road. But let's watch what happens today. So as Saul is going out on the road, he was approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven came and it shined very brightly onto Saul. And this light was so bright that Saul fell down to the ground and then he heard a voice Saul heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? What? And Saul, Saul's like, who, who are you, Lord? And the voice said something that Saul could not believe. The voice said, Saul, I am Jesus, the one that you are persecuting. Now, get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. Well, there were some men traveling with Saul that were helping him, and these men, they stood around speechless because they heard the sound of someone's voice, but they didn't see anybody. So they just heard a voice, but they couldn't see anyone. So Saul finally got back up off the ground, but when he tried to look around, he was blind. Saul could not see. That light had been so bright it had blinded him and he was reaching around and he couldn't see anything. So his men had to help him. So they had to lead him by the hand onto the city of Damascus where, where they were headed. And he was blind for three days. That's how long he was blind in, in verse nine. And he didn't eat anything or drink anything for those three days. So what in the world is gonna happen to Saul? And what does Jesus have a plan for Saul? And how's Saul going to do anything if he's blind? Well, at the same time, God also spoke to a believer that was in Damascus. And his name was Ananias. Wait a minute, we've heard that name before. Ah, but this is a different Ananias. This is not the same guy that was married to Sapphira. This is not the Ananias and Sapphira of a few weeks ago in that lesson. You know, we talked about Ananias and how it sounds like Ananas, which is another name for pineapple, but it's not this guy, it's a totally different guy. If you haven't read, seen that story, then uh, go down and check out in the links at the bottom of this video and you can go back and you can watch any of our videos before and you can go watch that one. But this guy named Ananias, he was a believer and God spoke to him in a vision and he spoke to him and he said, go over to Straight Street to the house of a man named Judas. And when you get there, ask for a man from the city of Tarsus named Saul, because this man Saul is praying right now. And I have shown Saul a vision of a man named Ananias that will come and lay hands on him so that he can see again. Whoa, that's a lot. So God is telling Ananias to go to a specific house on a specific street, and there you're gonna find a man named Saul who is waiting to be healed by you. But whoa, 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 wait a minute. Ananias is saying, wait, wait, Lord, I've heard about this guy Saul, and I know who Saul is. He's the one that's been rounding up Christians and trying to kill them. 
listen to this. In, in verse 13, Ananias says, I've heard a lot of people talk terrible things about what this man has done to believers in the city of Jerusalem. And he's given permission by the leading priest to come out here and to arrest everybody who calls himself a believer in Jesus. But the Lord said to Ananias, Go, for Saul is my chosen servant to take my message to the Gentiles and to kings as well as to people all over Israel. And I'm going to show Saul how much he's going to have to suffer because of my name. So the Lord is telling Ananias that even though Saul is who he is, the Lord has a great plan for Saul. And it's a big plan that's going to change Saul's life. He wants Saul to go preach to the non-Jewish people. He wants Saul to go reach everybody for Christ, and especially those people who weren't brought up Jewish, who don't know anything about God, the, 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 the Jewish law. So he's going to be preaching to people everywhere. Well, Ananias did what he was told, and in verses 17 and on, we see that he goes and he found Saul. And he found him and he said, Brother Saul, Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, this is pretty cool. Now, instantly, something like scales fell off of the eyes of Saul, and Saul could see again. Pretty amazing. His temporary blindness was now gone. He had been healed, and the man Ananias had come, and it healed him, just like God said. So Saul, he got up, and man, he was probably hungry enough to eat macaroni off of a wall, but he got up, and he ate something, and he drank something, and he started getting his, getting his health back. Saul then stayed with the people there in Damascus for a few more days. He was regaining his strength, and he also started preaching. Listen to this. He stayed in Damascus for a few days, and he immediately began preaching about Jesus in the Jewish synagogues. Now remember, a synagogue, that's kind of like what you might think of as a church. The synagogue, it was like the building. It was a place where the Jewish people would go Every, every week, and that's where they would worship God and they would learn about God and people would read from the scriptures. So Saul, because he was a very smart, very learned man and, and a teacher among the Jews, he went to the synagogue and he started teaching, but now he's teaching people about Jesus. Whoa. He used to be arresting people for believing in Jesus. Now he is preaching to people about Jesus. It is amazing. His preaching became more and more powerful, and the Jews in Damascus, they couldn't prove what Saul was saying was wrong. In fact, Saul was preaching that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was the one that all the scriptures was promising would fulfill God's plan, and he says that Jesus is truly the Son of God. The Jewish leaders, they were now getting mad at Saul, and now they were going to plan to kill Saul. Well, when the believers found out about this, they made a plan to rescue Saul. So what they did is during the night uh, in verse 25, some of the other believers, they put Saul in a big basket and then they lowered him through an opening in the city wall. So they put him in this big basket, they put him up on the edge of the city wall and then there was like an opening in the wall and they lowered him in that basket all the way down to the ground. And so Saul was able to escape the city. Wow, pretty amazing stuff. So now Saul, he's going back to the big city of Jerusalem, right? The capital, he's going all the way back. So he goes back to Jerusalem and he tries to meet with the believers. But wait a minute, don't you think you would be afraid also if this man who used to be arresting you and approving of you dying, he's now coming to you saying, hey, let me, let's talk about Jesus. So they were a little skeptical. But he tried to meet with the believers, but they were afraid. They didn't believe. But then a man named Barnabas came up. And this man named Barnabas, he brought him to the apostles, and he told them how Saul had been on the way to the Lord and how the Lord had spoken to Saul. And he also told them that Saul had preached boldly about Jesus. Pretty cool stuff, huh? So Saul stayed with the apostles, and he went all around Jerusalem, and he's preaching everywhere that he goes. And he debated with some of the Greek-speaking Jews. And Saul is just doing everything he can to preach to people about Jesus. You know, I'm sure Saul was very excited to escape and to get away from those who were pursuing him. And in fact, 
Saul made several new friends in the city of Damascus. But can you imagine how his life completely changed? He thought he was doing what God wanted him to do. He thought that persecuting Christians was the right thing to do. He was so focused on following the law and what he thought was true that he had not considered the truth about Jesus being the Messiah. And it took God actually blinding Saul for three days so that he could then focus and see the light, so that he could see the truth. It's kind of funny that Paul needed to be blind before he could see the truth. And yeah, I said Paul because we know Saul as Paul because God changes his name a couple of chapters later. We, we might read about that in a little bit. But Saul, who's soon going to be known as Paul, he is going to spend the rest of his life serving God the true way. And he's going to be writing so many letters to different churches. And today, we have those letters in the Bible, even now. Any of the books of the Bible that are named after a group of people or after a city, those are that's probably a good indication that it was written by Paul. For example, uh, the book of Romans. Paul wrote a letter to the people that lived in Rome. So we call that letter the, the letter to the Romans, and it became a book of the Bible, the book of Romans. The same for Corinthians, right? There was a city named Corinth. So if you lived in Corinth, you were a Corinthian. So we read about the book of Corinthians. That was from a couple of letters that Paul wrote to the people living in Corinth and so on. So lots of the books of the Bible in the New Testament were actually letters that were written by Paul. And we're going to see so much adventure that Paul has, and uh, he is going to have to suffer a little bit. He's going to go through so many trials, but he's doing all this because he knows the truth about Jesus being the Messiah, about Jesus being the Son of God. And it's just amazing how God completely changed him from what he thought he was going to do with his life to what he ended up doing with his life. And just like today's story point was that Jesus saved Paul and chose him to spread the gospel. You know, Jesus chooses us as well. You know, we may not be able to lead an amazing adventurous life like Paul would, having all these amazing travels and getting in all sorts of uh, predicaments and troubles and, uh, and being tortured and all kinds of things. And for some of that, we may be glad, but you know, Jesus calls us as well. We're also to spread the gospel. We're to tell other people about Jesus when we can and uh, do what we can and, and do what it is that people in the church do. And that kind of leads into, again, our big picture question throughout all of this. And that is, you know, why does the church exist? You know, we talk about in our memory verse about we're all part of one body and, you know, how Christ is the head of the body. Why does the church exist? Well, you know the answer to the big picture question. The church exists to glorify God by worshiping Him, showing His love, and telling others about Jesus. Well, thanks again, Ken Gardeners, for letting me be in your room today. So glad to be back in here. I uh, look forward to the day when you can come back in here as well. And we've got some exciting news coming up soon. So until then, stay in the Word. And uh, we're going to see so much more about what Saul whose name is going to change to be Paul. We're going to see so many things as we study about what Paul has written and taught other believers. Hope you'll come back with me for that. And until then, enjoy today if you happen to be watching it on Valentine's Day uh, or any other day of the year is perfectly fine. You guys take care and we'll see you next time.